All right, looks like I'm live. Topsy Jerby days, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said yesterday, things get harder from here on out. Morning, Eli. Morning, Aram. Morning, Rob. Smash. <laughs> Everyone, smash your thumb. <laughs> I like that, Rob. <laughs> Everyone, smash your thumb right now. Woohoo. Holy LK. Is everyone buying coffee right now? Oh, yeah, lots of coffee. Look at that. What, did China announce that they're banning vending machines or something? Isn't this vending machine coffee, if I'm not mistaken? Just smash! Hulk smash. That's funny. We mentioned how, how uh, LK and Alibaba's been holding up. I wonder if Alibaba's destroyed, too. Nope. Just LK. I wonder what that's about. Let's find out. You are the new contestant on the stock is right. Circuit breaker to upside over 30% over last minute. Down 79% for session. Well, where the hell's a circuit breaker on the downside? Uh, Lucky Coffins share sink 81% after... Uh, what was it? COO? Uh, suspends... Yeah, COO. They suspended the COO. Over operations and stuff. There's an investigation going on. Is your coffee hot enough? No, down 80%. Boom. So, Michael. Fabrication of certain transactions, only certain transactions, not other transactions. You see, I only fudge the transactions about people's purchases, not other transactions. Your comments, unfortunately, Rob, your comments are showing up. So we're just we're just, we're all just gonna have to live with that. Fang EOG up nine percent. Is oil oh is oil finally going up? Maybe on Trump's Trump said we know what to do. I think he, I th it's it was funny. Listen, he's like someone asked him about the oil. He's like that's a very good question. Uh, blah 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 blah. I think I know what to do. Yeah yeah I know what to do. I'm not gonna tell you what what I'm gonna do. But, but I know what to do if we need to do it. It's a very good thing to do. So maybe that's why the oil stocks are running today. What's that one that we've been uh, watching? O Oxy, right? OXY? Where is it? There it is. 9% today. <clears throat> what if it's up on, uh, on Trump? Trump foreseen stuff crude oil up eight percent today it has the best density oil has the best density i talked to everyone they keep saying the density of oil is just the best but it's got to be american oil it's got to be american oil and it's just the best that's just that's not what i say that's what they say everyone says the same thing but sometimes it's not the best this time it is the best but it's the density it's the best density <sighs> the key to sounding like Trump, which I don't, is just to say everything there is possibly to say. That's right. Oil first, Michael. Very good. At least you're starting to understand. I was worried about you there for a second. <laughs> right? <coughs> right, Ellie? All right, guys. I've solved it. I've solved two crises in one. Just go to your local gas station. Pump a gallon of gas and drink it on the spot. That will solve all of your problems. There will be no more coronavirus. Oil prices will soar, at least for the first day. And do that on the day after the election when you vote for Trump.
All right. So after 6.6 .6 million unemployment, ladies and gentlemen. So um, Trump said we had 160 million jobs. Let's just do the math on that real quick. So 160. What the hell's going with my computer? 160. No, not 162. Minus, we're, we're, we're down 10 million jobs now. So 150 million. So 6.6 .6 times 2 times 2, 3, 4. So five weeks from now, we're all unemployed and getting paid by the federal government. Guys, it's only six weeks away, the nirvana we've all been looking for. I got jokes this morning for some reason. I think there's not much the hell else to do. Buy an LK, sue so 10x back to highs. Do it, Rob. Do it. Don't do it with a lot of your account. I was actually, I was loosely thinking the same thing. Not that I was going to do it, but I was thinking about it for a second. So, Zoom down 14%. Why the heck would that happen? I told you it was going to get harder. Yes. One thing for certain, after the after the first move and a half, things get more difficult. And I think I think we're in that uh, I think we're in that thing. Do it. I don't know if that's that's not a good I don't have a good Emperor Palpatine voice. I don't think that's I don't think that's a good thing. <clears throat> I could I could try to hit myself in the throat with a hammer, that feels like it it could get me there. It's called residual Trump, Ellie. It's called residual Trump. It's something that happens after you do a Trump impression. Something about that dude, man. Damn it. Still can't make my tissues in my basket. <sighs> okay, so what are actual stocks doing? All right, Tesla, 485. Just under 500 yesterday. Our volume yesterday, let's go take a look at our volume. On the queues, we actually, um, we ended up, so I think we ended kind of up here towards the, yeah, we ended up up here towards the high. We did put in the topping candle for the day. And then we kind of closed lower the rest of the day. We still have that general lower volume going on here. It was broken to the upside. Um, but it was eventually going to get broken anyway. So... I'm not I'm not so massively sure about direction at this stage of the game. Like I said yesterday, after you know the the bottoming action here and breaking this rising trend line, so this this is um signal one that you're done going down. This is st stage one going up, and now this is the next this is the next stage, albeit it's a very minor stage, and that's why I said yesterday. Is that you know after this, this wasn't obvious, but when it started to happen, it became the trend, and then now we're back into weird land. So I think that's why I jokes this morning because just very strange land today. You can kind of see it all over the place. Zoom down fourteen percent for no apparent reason. Although even if there's news, I really wouldn't know about it not on this platform. But uh, and that you know that looks like to be our big mover. Everything else there's five percent for Royal Caribbean, uh, seven percent for Oxy. Silver's up three, and gold's up one. That's a little strange. Um, Vixes are flat. Everything's pretty flat today after yesterday with a lot of volatility. Um, but yeah, not a lot of action yesterday in terms of follow-up. <clears throat> I don't think we did a whole bunch of extra movements after the thing. Got some Tesla yesterday. Okay. I'm not mad at some Tesla positions. Yeah, I'm not mad. Go check out the volume on the IBD. So our volume yesterday was uh, the, the smallest we've had in a while, so that's pretty good. That's at least a, a start, but if there's a chink in the armor, um, I don't know if you would call that a chink in the armor considering that we could, probably couldn't con continue that trajectory based on, on events. 
Uh, it was going to get weird at some point. And S&P also lower volume. Um, pretty much a, and so far today, a nothing day. So, yeah, it's going to get a little more difficult from here. Um, yeah, I think, hold on a second. All right, let's see if I can make this tissue in the basket. You ready? Can't see. Damn it, I can't see if I made it or not. Oh, well. Whenever your bets were, they were wrong, so I didn't even see if I made it. I thought I cleaned up all the tissues on the floor yesterday, so I probably didn't make it. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, probably not much to do today. Um really with the market kind of all over the place right now. I feel okay. I think it's just got allergies, Ellie. Just some allergies. Oh, with um, with my son the other day, with James, he I think he just had a little, little thing of the flu. Just a little thing of the flu. Like I said, we're over it now. It takes us about 12 hours to get over it. I'll go ahead and, uh, if you guys want to, I'll... If you guys get the flu, I'll send you some of my spit, and you guys can go ahead and swallow that only seventy nine ninety five for a limited time. The antibodies are strong in the Pratt family. I can't tell you it. It. Uh, I can't tell you it uh, works on COVID, but it might. It might. I know other people say it does. I'm not, but other people are saying that. So go blame them if it doesn't work. Boeing seeks to cut workforce for new reality after COVID-19. Oh, yeah, that's why. That's why you're cutting workforce, Boeing. Yeah, we, that's a brick wall we can't see through. That lovely headline. Futures slide as oil prices counter massive jobless spike. No, they don't. I don't understand. I want to see the economics behind 20 cent cheaper gas giving you a bunch more money in your bank. Um... Our usual, I told you, our usual budget for gasoline is like 250 bucks. I lowered it to 50 bucks, considering my wife isn't really commuting anymore. But a 250 dollar bounce in a month, I mean, that better not be the difference between good economy and bad economy. <laughs> it's so strange. <clears throat> April's an amazing month for stocks. Um, probably won't be this month. Risk taking boosts your own success score, says FICO CEO. What's that about? Maybe you should buy LK. Apparently, risk taking is the key to success. Oh come on, IBD, you're killing me. These aren't even these aren't even articles that are for for the for your your, your chosen ones. Here we go. And man that looks like dried crackers with milk, William Lansing took over his fight is a Fair Isaac CEO in 2012. CEO of the self-described turnaround mindset runs towards new challenges. He built his career trying to solve, trying new things and helping employees solve problems. What's this got to do with his, what he's talking about? I don't even know what he's talking about. LK is um, coffee kiosks in China, Aram. Surely we're going to test the bottom again. Um, you would think so. You would think so. I'll just, I'll just say that. Um, I've been saying that the stock market likely has, you know, one leg of this um, thing in the bag. I think 
you know, there's a possibility we, we, we go past the one leg. I talked the other day about April 30th being at the at the um, the long end of what Wall Street has probably got, got planned in there. If we start moving into May and then into June, which at least in the U.S. is uncoordinated as our effort is, I think it is likely that we do continue uh, moving lower there in terms of um, this quarantine thing moving past moving past April 30th. I, I don't know. I, I just don't, it just doesn't, it doesn't appear there's a coordinated effort to, to kind of lock stuff down for a quarantine to actually be effective. Because for a quarantine to be effective, it kind of has to be a quarantine. Not a, hey, would you, do you, you mind staying home today? Oh, you, oh, you want to go out? Oh, yeah, that's okay. Just go ahead. It kind of actually has to be a quarantine. So, I don't know. I, I probably think that April 30th was longer than I thought Trump was. Trump was saying Easter, and I'm like, okay, that sounds about right. You know, now again, this is all just feelings. There's no data backing anything that I'm saying. Your guess is as good as mine, but in my mind, I was thinking, you know, East April 12th, that's probably about that's probably about right for what Wall Street has pegged in the market right now. And then he came out with um, April 30th. I'm like, wow, Trump's actually listening to people. That's an interesting one. And he um, came out on TV and said it, said it was the best closure shutdown in the world anyone's ever seen. And um, anyway, so they're starting to push that back and back and back. And if that brings in more uncertainty, then um, could start seeing uh, higher selling pressures again. So we'll see. We'll see. I think I think the test of the low is likely. At least somewhere in that area now. You know, our, we're primed for a follow-through day any day right now. I just don't know if it's just hard to say. Um, you know, wh when we get back down there, um, we'll see if the low holds. You know, I don't like forecasting because it makes you think something, and I don't want to think anything. I just want to see what the market's doing. Someone who knew got it. That usually does the trick with start treating it seriously. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Ellie. If someone yeah, that's true. You know, if you're, if you're, um, there's actually studies done about this and, uh, about racism. If you end up, if you don't know any black people and aren't privileged to, you know, any of the struggles of a black person, and then you meet a black person that you'll like, and then, you know, they start to tell you about their struggles, you'll actually start to take it seriously. Happens. There's been studies about it. It happens all the time. Yeah, but you have to have exposure to a situation before, um, for some people, Trump being one of them. I'm sure you have to have exposure to a situation before you actually think it's real, give a shit about it, or, you know, something like that. <clears throat> but that's uh, qu quite a few. I um, heard a few stories with some people that had some, some racist views that uh, finally got to know people of color and realized that, wait a minute, everything I've thought my entire life is completely wrong. So, it happens. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, he's taking it more seriously, which, um, and he talked yesterday about, someone asked him, hey, why don't you just issue a freaking quarantine order for the U.S. blanket, screw it, all throughout the U.S., and he said, well, you know, there's some states that actually don't have it, and it wouldn't be fair to lock them down. Um, I mean, I guess there's a point to that, but... You know, quarantine's a quarantine. You got a quarantine or it's not a quarantine. Kind of the way it is, right? So we'll see. April 30th, we're coming up on April 2nd. So 10 whole days. Actually, it's about, it was like the 31st. It was like the 31st, I think. It was a Sunday that he announced that. Um, oh, so th yeah, that would have been Tuesday. It was two days ago. He announced that, and so that was a whole 12 days ahead of when he was hoping he could get things back to normal, but um, that's that's pretty good foresight. I think it's the, the, the furthest ahead Trump's ever thought. Da -da -tsh. Man, I got puns today. If he'd started mass testing in January, would have been able to focus on the hot spots. That's true, Paul. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we did... Yeah, because Seattle ended up having a bunch of cases that nobody knew about. So, oh, Ellie, you can't take New Mexico as your example. New Mexico sucks. 
keep in mind, the only thing in New Mexico is Albuquerque and uh, Roswell. And that's about it. And it's a pretty big state. It's a decent sized state. But they don't actually get five miles between two people. It's not a thing, legitimately. Oh, Greenland, 100 miles between two people. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know much about Greenland other than I just know there's glaciers there covered in, covered in ice. I'm assuming there's people there, but I have no idea. Other than the fact Trump was talking crap about buying Greenland, which he was never actually going to do. Uh, and then somehow Germany controls it, I think. It, no, not Germany. It's like Norway or something. Control. <clears throat> or the Dutch. I think it's the Dutch. I don't know, the whole Scandinavia area, I don't, I get those terms all mixed up. Too many pasty white people. Super pasty white. It's like I couldn't tell you the difference between uh, super dark Africans. Or different skin color than Europeans. They're just too similar. Yeah. I did know that, Rob. I did know that. Go Vikings. You can thank the Vikings for that one. New York, 26,000 people per square mile. Holy crap. No wonder you guys have 50,000 cases of the coronavirus. Congratulations, you're in the lead. <sighs> but yeah, I uh, at this stage of the game, I'm not, I, I don't think that um, active trading is probably the best thing to be doing at the moment. Well, let, well, I take that back. Active trading is probably okay, but I don't think uh, like long-term swing trading from here. Again, those early positions I think are okay. If you want to take some profits on those, I, I don't think that's the end of the world either. The way this is behaving um, and the way that the pandemic's going and the way that unemployment's going, we're likely just to see more flattering about, if not lower prices. We'll see what the next... It does seem like we continue to get uh, less good news more closures, more additional closures, which will likely, you know, lengthen, uh, lengthen our, our stay down here. So it looks like a shorter term closure is already probably blown past. But we'll see. Still waiting for a follow through day. Still waiting for a follow through day. The question is, can the Federal Reserve pump enough money to enough people quick enough to really stave off something, something bad? Um, after listening to that conf, you know, the the, the conf. Uh, the news conference of the president and that doctor, I don't want to butcher his name, I think it starts with an F, um, National Security Health Advisor, National Health Advisor or something. That dude's super cool. Apparently, yeah, in high school he was a pretty decent basketball player. Trump said the NBA, but I don't think it was the NBA. That's not going to work. Anyway, Fauci. Yeah, Fauci. F F A U C Fauci? Yeah, this guy. This guy's super cool. And he speaks the truth it it, it appears. So um Death threats? What the hell is this? Why are you death threatening Fauci? Because America, well, he's white. What's the problem? America loves white people. <coughs> I don't know, maybe he's Jewish. I think that's like the only caveat to, to white is Jewish. At least to some people. Anyway, the dude's super cool. I don't know why anybody would mess with him. But I think Paul gave the correct answer was Murica. He's Italian? Oh. He should be fine then. He's got mob mob control. 
Actually, he looks Italian in that picture with his arms crossed like that. Like, what? We're in an epidemic. It's my world now, bitch. That's what Fauci was saying right there. Here you go. You don't make the timeline. The virus makes the timeline. Fauci's dope. So I wonder if, hopefully he's the guy in uh, Trump's here. He's at least smart. The dude has served at, in his post. He's looking him up on Wikipedia. I think since Reagan. Through every president since Reagan. It's pretty, pretty phenomenal what the guy's, I don't know. I don't know who is uh, been in their post for that long. Yeah, make him the new president. I don't even know his politics, but yeah, right there, Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton. 1984. So yeah, the dude has been in his office almost longer than I've been alive. I guess when you reach the top, you want to stay there. <laughs> the dude uh, it's like... Yeah, I'm the manager of this Chick-fil-A. I've been here for 40 years. When you reach the top, you don't want to go back down. <clears throat> yeah, apparently he got the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Bush for SARS or something like that. Yeah, I wonder what I wonder what his um his place is in the order of taking the presidency should probably bump it up a few notches. Yeah, 2008, June 2008. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that's Bush. Anyway, so Fauci's cool and um, good to have him at least. At least we have a sane person to listen to. In all honesty, even if Trump was was spitting the absolute truth, it's like it's like Chicken Little Boy, right? It's like I don't believe anything you're saying, but he, he's like, no, seriously, this is the truth. Everything else I've ever said has been a lie. This is the truth. You're still not gonna believe him, cause the dude. I think it's funny in the thing, he calls report. He's talking to the reporters. He's like, you shouldn't say anything that you know not to be true. And I'm thinking, really? Really? Come on. Seriously? You're going to say that? So anyway, there's Fauci. Fauci's a cool guy. So NASDAQ oscillating up and down. You can see here just in the first few. Um, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that's usually not good. Wider action like that, not good. You'd like to see much tighter action. Um, biotech up a bunch today. Percentage gains. Not much going on there. IO. ION. Geophysical Corporation. LK down 74%. The war on drugs, Paul. Well, we love drugs now. We're like, hey, can we have more drugs, please? Let's go find some drugs that were with this coronavirus. We'll be, able to, we'll be good to go. Yeah, 74% seems super aggressive. 7 billion market cap. I wonder if that's after the drop. I would assume it would. A law firm investigating claims on behalf of Luckin shareholders. Oh, yeah. Lawyers are all over that. Yeah, it could be a nice short squeeze right there on LK. Let's go check it out. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Open at 5. We're already almost at 10. If you're lucky, we, we close the day down 30%. <laughs> that would be, take us back to 1872. CCL. Rob, you're all over the place, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Carnival. This is, oh, Carnival Cruise Lines. Ew. This is Carnival Cruise Lines, Rob. Uh, this one's already back at the low. I don't know if I've quite seen a stock come back to the low already. This is the first one, I think. We don't have this on our list. Let's put it on our list. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. So, yeah, Carnival already coming back to the lows, double bottoming. I don't think we have anything else that has a double bottom right now. It's part of the reason why um, I think we've kind of been done going lower for the most part. But uh, if we start seeing those double bottoms like that, that's, that's not going to happen. It's actually not going to happen at all. I don't think I really thought it to put it in those terms before, but I guess I said we're holding up, so that's good. That's, I think, what I'm what's implied by that. Um, so Royal Caribbean, yeah, still hasn't even quite double bottomed, but Carnival... Uh, actually, double bottoming here is a little bit concerning, and I guess we'll have to see how it withstands. Uh, where is that? Where's Royal Caribbean? Oh, it's right there. Duh. So yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe there's something going on here, but uh, look, if you pick, I mean, I don't know. I don't like to play in these waters. This is really dangerous. I can't imagine. Like I said before, I think cruise lines are going to be the ones to come back last due to the stigma of people being stuck on cruise ships. That's all you saw for like a, two weeks almost is, oh, there's 600 people stuck on a cruise ship, 4,000 people stuck on a cruise ship, stuck on a cruise ship, stuck on a cruise ship. So I think they're going to be um, pretty long to come back, pretty long road, not to mention they're not getting any bailout money <clears throat> um, versus United Airlines, which is, and it looks like it's even... Yesterday was a pretty good distribution day. You can see elevated volume there and starting to come back down. So I'm not sure if I'd step in front of cruise lines quite yet, especially without bail money. Airlines, probably a little less risky, but it's it's uh, the way the selling pressure is going. Yeah, it definitely appears could be exacerbated to the downside, um, at least an attempt at a leg possibly. Oh, let's see what the wind has to say on their website about closures. All right, so they don't have a date. They're just saying that we're closed and we'll let you know when we're opening. That's a good sign. All right, guys, hold on a minute. I'll be right back. All right. Water is good. <clears throat> Got to get some water. Uh, zoom down 11%, bouncing back a little bit. Quite a bit, actually. Look at that daily candle. Looks really nice. Not bad right there. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay, so market's basically flat at the moment, it seems. Got the Qs a quarter of a percent up. Uh, we'll see what happens. Like I said, things get a little more difficult from here. Um, it's I think it's all just dependent on this coronavirus thing, man, truly. 
I'll just uh, I'll just depend it on this. So we're just waiting for waiting for news at this stage of the game. And uh, again, with the subtrend broken as of yesterday, I think we're in situations where there's not too much to be done. Um, investing in stocks is a is a waiting game. You wait to buy, and then after you buy, you wait. So so we sold, we waited, we bought some, we waited, I sold some yesterday, and um, now, I'm wait, now I'm waiting again. I'm going to keep what I got, <clears throat> I'm going to keep what I got, and then um, we'll see if we start undercutting lows. I'll have to make a decision if I how bad the news is at that moment in time. So... Um, yeah, I think it's a waiting game right here. I don't think there's too much to do, to be honest with you. Uh, Rob, if, you know, Rob is having some fun playing in Lucky Donuts over here. Oh, did we just have a little topping candle in Lucky Donuts? So I got a Lucky Donuts down the street, so that's all. I'm, lucky makes me think about Lucky Donuts. Um, a little bit of a reversal candle right there. We'll see what happens with that. This is a very fluid situation. This is just a trading environment, so... Um, yeah, this can do anything, absolutely anything. When you get these kind of these kind of stories, that's why I don't I don't like to do anything with them. There's no real edge in the market unless you jump in super duper early and just have no fear, don't think about it at all, just react. That's probably the best way you can trade those situations. Sometimes you have some time, and that's pretty lucky. But with circuit breakers, like Rob was saying, um, having a hard time getting in. So. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot to do here. If you already have your, your couple positions or your, your smaller position sizes, remember earlier down lower, um, you know, I think I think those are okay for right now. If you're up here, you know, it's up to you if you want to sell them or not. If you have a couple, if you bought a few shares on these down days, that's up to you if you want to sell those. But for right now, I think we're just kind of waiting and seeing and waiting for a follow through day, which arguably could come at any time. Um, sometimes the market rallies when you least expect it. So definitely still keeping watch on the markets. And you saw yesterday we rallied early and ended up selling off most of the day. And then into the close, we got a little bit choppy, actually. We had a pretty good green candle right there and then a red candle on slightly lower volume with a topping candle. And now we're, we're playing with that area right now, see if we're able to get up. But it's going to be pretty choppy from here on out, probably reduced volatility. <clears throat> so as you can see, um, I think yesterday we ended up closing down about 3% with the gap. But today, we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, Rob. It, it's, yeah, as soon as we see some kind of end in sight, um, or they can they can ascertain maybe when we're likely to, most likely to get out of it, there'll be a point where they start buying. So the question is, is there a, a period of selling in between now and then? That's the question to, to have answered. So, I mean, the volatility has been reduced here. I mean, it's highly likely that we're done. On a, well, I'm not going to say highly likely. I mean, there is a case that, that we're done going down because, again, this isn't a prolonged recession. This is an event. So as long as it remains an event and doesn't become a prolonged recession, we could have already bottomed, right? That's that's the, that's the best case scenario. As long as this is a, a contained situation um, where the variables are mostly known. I mean, I think the data is out there. You can see all the curves in terms of infections and stuff like that, right? So the data is out there. We, we could have bottomed already and be, you know, slowly working our way back higher, but they're just nitpicking at the stocks that they want um, and then, you know, dumping it, like yesterday, dumping it down and then trying to buy it back up whenever they see fit. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's going to be what it's going to be. So yeah, I did. St I started buying stuff for my office remodel, and I'm excited. I'm super excited about it. See a couple of potential caveats. Other than that, uh, I'm super excited about it. It's the end of the world, Justin. Well, let me finish my. I want to see my 43 inch monitor on the screen first. I'm not panicked. I found a couple of uh, 4K 43s on OfferUp. But people are flaky as shit, so no one's re no one's replying to their their own ads. I could do this one. No issues, just don't use it much. I think I've already asked Anthony a question. You know, is Jr. Alyssa 
Oh, I guess I sent two. Anyway. Yeah, I can't wait to get that thing on the wall. That's going to be fun. They got a 4K gaming monitor that has four different inputs, and you can have it on four quadrants of the screen. I thought that was pretty cool. But it's like another 200 bucks. It's not that cool. Dropbox up 2%. Not sure why. Oxy service now was doing pretty good the other day, and now not so much. Looks like we're a little bit lower. Volume is diminishing on that again, so not not a big issue there. Yeah, not much. Uh, plays up five percent after a pretty brutal day yesterday. So we'll see. <clears throat> Back to weirdness. Um, hopefully, minimized volatility, meaning that some of our Volatility ETFs, uh, inverse volatility ETFs will start going up. That would be good. Um, but, you know, d depending on how the market handles incoming batch of news. Let's see if there's any more general coronavirus news. Other than that, guys, I think I'm going to bounce and get out of here before I bore you with talking about my office remodel more. <laughs> Pick something more for my office. <clears throat> I was going to get a bigger green screen that I could use for the kids. I haven't looked into that, though. I don't see much else. Social Security recipients will automatically receive stimulus pay. My mom's getting a check. Better pay off her damn credit card. That ain't happening. Ikea standing desks. Ooh, I didn't think about looking at Ikea. I actually ordered one last night, so it's probably a little a little late for that. Um, yeah, let's check it out. Ellie wants to go Ellie wants to go furniture shopping. <laughs> if anyone doesn't want to go furniture shopping, you're at the wrong channel. Boom! Real furniture here right now. Real IKEA. Standing desk. Let's see what they got. You're bored at home? I'm bored too. Well, I'm not, I'm not really bored. But can't be bored with kids all the time. You're just annoyed mostly. Um, anyone know they made it sound like check will just happen based on what you filed in the last taxes? I think that's the case, to be honest with you, Rob. Um, there's probably going to be some procedure for those of you that, you know, don't... Um, not that you don't file taxes, but that you have wrong information or something. So you're going to have to Google some of that stuff, I think. Wow, 379 for motorized. That's not cheap. That's not IKEA cheap. 429 No, thank you. Yeah... Man, they're getting more pricey. <clears throat> um, they break often. So I'll show you the one I did buy because I bought it yesterday. Let's see if I can find it in my email. Um, oh, Seville Classics. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so I bought, and it's not a real desk because it's just for the keyboard. Keep that in mind, too. Yeah, that's right. You've got dual pop ups just to make me hate you even more. That's crazy. It's similar to this, but not as it's not 160 bucks. That's uh, it's it's similar. To, it's just a laptop stand, is what it is. It's got a pneumatic thing. 
Um, the tabletop's a little small. I'm actually probably going to swap it out. I'm going to just have some fun and build a nice one out of some some paduke or something like that. I uh, should have bought that, the tilting one, but I wanted the pneumatic. I wanted the pneumatic. It's, it's not the best, but it's... Uh, I may try to modify it or something. It's like 90 bucks. Oh, come on. They got to go all the way to page 6. You know, it's good quality when it's the last one on there. Here it is. So they say it's it's actually pretty heavy, so I'm pretty sure it's uh, decent quality. Uh, the casters are a little small, but a um, couple things I don't like about it, but it was like 90 bucks or 200 bucks, And I wasn't sure if I was going to like a standing desk to begin with, so I really didn't feel like investing a tremendous amount of money into it. But uh, <laughs> standing desk for ants, yeah. So, but anyway, it's got it's got the pneumatic the pneumatic uh, lifter in it. So, like I said, I'm probably gonna replace the tabletop, and uh, that's about it. So we'll see how it goes. I didn't want to go too crazy. If if I really do like it and it works out really well, and I find it limiting in some fashion, then I'll I'll look into it a little more. But by then I'll have a little bit of skin in the game, and it'll be. Uh, I was, I really wouldn't. Uh, I didn't want to go. I don't want to spend like three hundred bucks. The desk I started looking at was about three hundred bucks. I wouldn't mind something like this with the splayed legs like that. That's really what I was looking for. And then angled, like like it's weird. This one with the pneumatic arm would be very good, but I think the pneumatic arm needs to be vertical, which is why. And the tilting lectern at the top here would be nice too, but. So, because I, cause I wanted pneumatic, I didn't get the angled one. So, a little bit limiting, but I probably, I thought about this one. I could have got away with this one. Only 35 bucks. And I do like the fact it angled up, but I didn't want to have to do this stupid knob all the time. So, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I can, I can probably uh, make the desktop a little bit bigger. But I was looking at that monitor in here. It's basically four of my current 22 and a half inch monitors, all close to that, on the wall. What's going to be dope? And now I'm just trying to locate the um, locate the mount, because apparently all my wholesale all my wholesalers stopped carrying this Omni mount brand a while ago. So yeah, I don't know if I need this this companion bracket or not. Anyway. I figure I just mount my microphone to the uh, to the stand. A mic here. I go to the stand. Maybe I'll add like a little couple of hooks on the bottom for my headphones and such. But other than that, I'm pretty excited. Can't wait to get it going. Here's the problem, though. Like if I go to Amazon, it's probably right here. If I go to Amazon and I try to buy that arm, they're not going to ship it until until the 21st. Yeah, 145 bucks, which I think I can I can do better than that through a wholesale account. And um, yeah, now it's April 23rd. Yay! So I'll, if my if my other wholesaler doesn't have it, then I'll I'll be ordering this today. So I'll get a good HDMI cable because I'm doing a 4K TV. And um, yeah, It'd be pretty dope. I took a little video yesterday of my horrible, horrible office right now. I think I'm going to start uh, ripping it apart today, too. I think I'm committing to this. I don't know what I'm going to do with my laptop in the meantime, but... And then I'm thinking about buying a different chair, too, but... Um, on my board, Ellie, I'm really just ready to be done with this office. I've been done with it for about three, four months now, and I want, I've been wanting to redo it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then thought about the 4K monitor, and then just, I don't know, it just pop, popped into my head to rip everything apart. Yeah, not really bored. I'm. It, it's kind of funny. I'm in the middle of quite a few projects right now, and then I start, 
Um, I thought about building my own computer case for my computer because I'm, I'm kind of a tinkerer. I like to build stuff. From time to time, my wife was like rolling her eyes at me yesterday. She's like, you got five projects going on. Just finish one of them. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll just fin fine. Fine, I'll fi actually finish a project. What do you want from me? Get away, mom. So, yeah, I've got my computer build, which is its own little thing. What you got? Kind of pricey? Okay. Let's hear it. Build my own keyboard. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, I can imagine it's harder. You, you need a lot of s weird sensors and stuff. Making the buttons would be kind of, kind of fun. Although you need some kind of laser etcher to etch them. I could, you could do it out of wood. Get out of here with stock stuff, Justin. This is real remodeling right now. Damn it. Oh, they sell PCB boards and cases. Oh, okay. Well, that's good if he's got to focus on that. It's it's really hard to find a nice keyboard. I was actually I was looking at that. So I was thinking with my lectern, I was going to have, I'm going to be disjointed from the computer. So either I have to have a longer USB cable, which I already have a 10 foot USB cable, an extension, I can use that. Um, or I can use a wireless keyboard. And they had an interesting one that was made for a Mac. This guy right here, solar powered. Because I, I really don't want batteries if I can avoid it. I'd rather it have a lithium charging inside of it. Um, <clears throat> and I also like laptop keyboards. I don't like the, the big keys. So I that seems like an interesting project. I, I think I'd rather build my own computer case. Dude, check this out. This was dope. This was so cool. I wonder if I still have it up. Um... This was probably the coolest computer case I've ever seen. Hey, look, I'm watching myself. <clears throat> um, this, this thing is a computer case. Look at that thing. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to Google that one. Your keyword there, Ellie. This dude's got 2 million subscribers, DIY perks. That's pretty dope. But um, this, is a, this is a gorgeous computer case. Absolutely gorgeous. I like it. Looks like an ugly coffee machine. I love this. This is great. He, the only thing he did wrong is he didn't know how to do these edges effectively. It's the only thing this guy did wrong. Is these edges are horrible. Other than that, other than that, this is this is done really, really well. But it doesn't look like any other computer case you've ever seen. And I love that. That's so cool. I was trying to think of what to do. I'm like, okay, I could make my own case because I'm gonna have my TV on the wall, I'm gonna have everything off the floor except for my computer, and I'm like, well, that's gonna look ugly. I should put it in line with my television, have my motherboard on the wall, because I got a big ass motherboard. Put my, which I, I don't really need, I guess. I probably could have bought a smaller motherboard. But anyway, um, put the motherboard on the wall and then find something cool to do with other stuff. And then I came across this guy. And this is awesome. I really do like this. This is neat. This is a great headphone amplifier, apparently. I should look into that. Anyway, that was super cool. Apparently this guy builds all kinds of crap. Yeah, he even, he actually, um, so he took this video card, this GTX 1080 Mini, and then he he stripped the, the heat sink off of it and built his own heat sink with copper plates and stuff. Apparently, the, uh, the power supply and the MOSFETs over here get super hot. So, 
Uh, went through quite a nice pro. That's what you can do when you have two million subscribers. You can spend time doing shit like this. So he built his own heat sink out of copper plates, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you you can see the the blue thermal tape and stuff like that. Anyway, it's pretty awesome. He did a, he did, really did a good job. Really, really did a good job. That's the only flaw I could find was that he didn't do those corners in the right way. But it's like a 9.9 .9 out of 10. At least in my opinion, I thought it was really good. But yeah, I was thinking about getting my computer off the ground, putting it on the wall there. I'll have to maybe maybe project for another day. Yeah, uh, it's after your kids are gone or that's your full-time job. <laughs> it's building stuff like that. All right, let's look at this keyboard that... Uh, only put in here. Oh, see, that has tall keys, though. I don't want tall keys. I like the laptop keyboard. What, you're, bit, you're bitching at me? I don't like tall keys? It's my preference. It's my presidential preference election. Yeah, I like I like the laptop clickety clack keys. I love laptop keyboards. That's why I, ha I like the keyboard that I currently have. Um, or if they still make it, that's the wrong URL. Hey, my preference sucks. How does my preference suck? You want to be fucking hiking Mount Everest with your damn fingers? I have this keyboard I have this keyboard it's pretty damn awesome it's, it could be a little bit stronger but it's pretty awesome TQ's broke opening range does that mean the Q's broke opening range oh we did yeah break into the upside that's decent that's decent volume there's some good volume candles there on the 15 minute candle on the Q's LK back, whoa, back down significantly. Just dropped 30%. My goodness. Yeah, welcome to, uh, welcome to trading stocks that are down 75%. Uh, that's actually really good volume. You're one minute into this five minute candle and your volume's already even with your prior candle or very close to even. So yeah, that's actually not looking too bad. <clears throat> Wonder if you're setting up for a maybe we're setting up for a fall today the second I get a little bit uh I want to say not forgiving on the market, but giving up on it a little bit. Could end up with a follow through day, which would be interesting, considering yesterday everything was still breaking down. So it's down to volume 4.2 versus the prior day. So so far, unless we get some accelerated volume here, um, down 10% versus the prior day, it looks like on the S and P. We have it holding up right there. Volume ag aggregation tool ended up turning bullish the latter half of yesterday here. And then our buyers look like they're trying to work their way back here at the moment. Funny thing about the volume aggregation tool, I was actually looking at this the other day. Um, so on the way... On the way down, we had this little bump. We don't get too much red on the VA tool, which is interesting. You do get a bump in here in terms of selling candles, and then it oscillates over here, the buyers do at least. And then now we're getting tighter, so could end up in a trend shift, um, depending on which way this, this VA tool decides to break. So, but I don't know, I'm just playing patient right now. I'm not really too up or too down. I'm just. 
is what it is. We're going to get these 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 breakups that look really good. Then it's gonna it's just going to be an emotional roller coaster. Uh, I really don't want to be involved in emotional roller coasters. Like I said, this is the weird part right here. This is where it gets strange. You do got to wait for the follow through day. We'll be checking in towards the end of the day, but other than that, I think I'm pretty much pretty much zoned out. To be honest with you, pretty zoned out. But I do like this keyboard. It's probably one of the better keyboards that I found. Uh, other than my, I like my laptop keyboard a lot. Okay, so what you got here? I don't like Bluetooth keyboards generally. I don't like wireless either. But on a desk like that, I guess I kind of do what I got to do. So what's so what's so good about the the tall key keyboard? What is that? Is that the key mechanism? Oh, this is a Mac keyboard. I'm assuming command would be akin to my alt. Alt shift control. <clears throat> Home. Uh, no 10 key? Come on, man. I gotta have a 10. Oh, there's a 10 key. Okay, cool. How come this doesn't show satisfaction level of travel? What are you going for a fucking hike? Ooh, aluminum body. That's pretty cool. I like that. White background. What's that look like? Oh, like that? Um, I don't know. That's interesting. It's kind of weird, though. It's not, I don't know about weird, but low profile blue, low profile red. What is this? Oh, you can order it with or without the 10 key. That's pretty cool. I like that. This one doesn't look too bad. Not clickety clackety. What is this though? What is is this the that's the key mechanism? Why are they showing it? I don't even see, I don't see anything on the keyboard there. You don't ever can you swap keys out or something? Like I don't know how the hell that, know how the hell that even works. Blue switch version. Clicky but not obnoxiously like the MX Blues. Oh, showing off the profile. Also, oh, that's the bottom of the button, maybe. Oh, different forces. Oh, actuation force. Suitability office and light gaming. Huh. Ooh, fancy. Oh, really, Rob? <laughs> I didn't notice that. Plus minus 15 grams. <laughs> That's pretty good. Ooh, quieter. Yeah, the red's quieter, too. I'd probably go for quieter. Although, I guess I've never really had a, a mechanical keyboard. I don't feel like spending a couple hundred bucks to... I don't think I'm really going to like it. Oh, what's that? That's a big ass video. Oh, you're not even gonna give me playback in it? Thanks, retards. That's a good view of it. Talk about collecting crumbs. There's some freaking crumbs for you.
Wish it had a little more ergonomics. <clears throat> well, hopefully I don't have to deal with that because I'm going to build my own tabletop. That's actually a possible option if the Bluetooth works really well, they say. I hate lag. Better not freaking lag. Let's see if I can listen to this. Okay, screw this dude. He's just bullshitting now. I guess you should watch this video more. <clears throat> Buyer showcase. Oh, can you buy different keys and stuff? Oh, see, that's cool. I need to do something cool like that. I need to build me a mouse pad. That's what I need to do. Boeing, uh, getting rid of employees. Um, as I said, 1.78% here now. That's interesting. I already have it on here. Just wanted to go to it. Well, I can't argue 3% is a good day for what the market's been doing lately. So, can't say that's the best thing ever. Uh, Tesla getting back up towards 490, a little over 490. Yeah, Q's almost up 2%. We'll see if that continues. So far, it looks like it's uh, that rally, opening range breakout, working really well, Rob. Good extended volume right there. I think that's look. That's the the first time we've been at average volume. So that could that could be a minor trend shift right there. We were we were at volume here for a minute. Um, at average volume. So this is lower lower volume, but it's still not doing too bad. Oxy up 18%. Looks like his oil may be starting to, I don't know about recover, but what's that three times oil ETF? That could be an interesting one. As crude's up 12%. Oh, it just had a crazy ass spike. What? What's that? That's a huge spike. That's like 27 or 28 from 22. Oil don't do that. Whoa, what just happened? The world just fell apart. Oh, Oral ETN. That's a big ass spike right there. Yeah, it could be super cheap oil. Strategy ETF Marathon Oil Company. Crude oil futures. Here we go. Uh, could be a first attempt off of a low right here for oil. That could be good. I wouldn't mind playing that. That's been just oil's been just beat up. And this is the first sign you have of some health. I can't say it's gonna. Huh, nothing on oil here. Boeing cabin crew member, I totally feel undervalued. Oh, British Airways. Uh, of oil? Yeah, I think, oh, well, maybe. From 23 up to, yeah, basically, Rob, yeah. I mean, we'll see if we can get back there. Look, this was before the coronavirus right here up to 40. But even that will give you about 200%. It, I mean, it's still risky, but in time, I mean, it, you would think this would be a shorter term move to the downside. It wouldn't be a longer term, wouldn't be a longer term thing. It may turn into longer than you'd like. So just, you know, take position sizes accordingly. But that that is by far the most beaten down uh, asset class, I would say. I mean, stocks are down pretty good, too. You can still find some good deals in stocks. But oil, um, 
could bounce back just as quick, if not quicker, depending on the news and how how it decides to rebound. Say Saudi Arabia decides to shut the pipes off and Russia meets a deal. This is going to gap 10%. Easy. Maybe more than that. I mean, this is up 15% right now, so it could be a 30 40% gap. I mean, the way... Because keep in mind, I think the reason this this gap was so dominant here, number one, I think that happened on a weekend, if I'm not mistaken. And then number two is the fact that um, everything, everyone's getting all the information at the same time. So all the traders are taking action quicker and quicker and these algos, with these algos especially. It makes these big moves, I think, happen faster in something like oil where it's very news driven. But that, yeah, that could be, you could start building a, a smaller position in oil. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think that's too bad. So the Qs have settled down a little bit. Uh, yeah, it looks like we've settled down a little bit right there. Yep, already pulled in. Okay, that makes sense. So, let's see, EXIV getting a little bit of a bump here. The inverse, if you remember this one, the inverse um, VIX from the stocks is 500% towards the highs. I'm not sure if we're going to get quite back that far, but you could at least get two, 300% out of this potentially um, if things start to calm down. And then, yeah, oil, oil probably not a bad play. What is a three times oil ETF? WTIU. Uh, yeah, I am, Rob. I, I ended up not selling that position. I still have it. Yeah, look, I figure, I figure in time it's going to come back. Where you know, there's zero chance of us staying super volatile forever. But it could be, uh, could be an interesting hold. Um, it's a small position size, but it's not that small. I'm still up on it, so that's good. Uh, UBS. So this is looks like one of those three times oil ETFs. Holy crap, what is that? I don't think that's real. You're not getting 2,300% out of that move. Something happened with that WTIU. Uh, that's not right. That's not right. What's up, babe? I just need to borrow this. You know, I think one of them stole it out of the car. Oh, they take, did they take that one? That big one, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Where's, did we had a short, short one, didn't we? I think this is it. No, it was like 3 foot, 6 foot, and 12 foot. So I think the 3 foot's gone. Uh, I don't know. Me neither. Year to date down 97%. Holy crap, look at this one. Up 348% for the inverse three times crude ETF. Eli says hi, babe. USOU. Yeah, that WT, what's. How is that down 97%? That must have been. Uh, must have been reverse split or something. Can I see reverse splits on here? Um, where's my settings on this thing? There it is. Show splits. I don't see a split. How the hell... I don't understand this. Not a single solitary bit. I don't understand any of this. How is that like 4,000%? Zero chance that is accurate. Where the hell? Oh, I'm in some stupid freaking menu. Close your damn menu. Oh, I'm not in a menu? Ah. 
expense ratio home page. Oh no, this seems super weird, but that is a huge, that is a massive, massive uh, percentage back up. I don't know about that. Yeah, oil oil could be a good play though. Um, oh look at that, up twenty five now. Yeah, there's definitely some some bottom buyers in here. It's gonna find a realistic three times oil ETF. I don't think that one's really that realistic. USOU three times oil fund. What? USOI. <clears throat> okay, that's a little bit more realistic. USOI right there. There's high volume without going down, so that, that that's pretty good. Um, what else we got? I do not know what happened with gold. What happened with gold? I uh, I think it's just the people in the know selling fucking gold to stupid people. <laughs> I don't know. I I avoid gold. It's such a it's so fuck it's so hyped. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. They they try to take advantage of people. Like the especially people on the cable news networks. If it was such a damn good investment, why are you shilling it on cable news network like a damn infomercial? Anyway, pisses me off. Bloomberg WTI crude oil sub index ERSM. The index is designed to measure the return from a rolling long position in WTI crude oil futures contracts that trade on user. That is so weird that WTIU. That's what that is. So apparently someone's really botching up this account, which is why they're they're down so much. Three times long security provide a daily long leveraged exposure to the performance of the Bloomberg WTI crude oil sub index ESRM. So that's your that's your benchmark. WTI crude oil Bloomberg. Let's try that. Bloomberg 2020, what's this? <laughs> Let's see what kind of garbage this is. Uh, I guess that's somebody with presidential candidates. That's weird. How about Sanders? They have Bernie Sanders? Nope. Bernie 2020. What is this? That's a weird one. Okay, now, now I just got off on this weird tangent. I already forgot what I was doing. Um, he has the Bloomberg WTI crude oil. How do I get more results the more I type?
Bloomberg Crude Oil, UCO. Crude Oil, Bloomberg WTI Crude Oil Sub Index. How do I get more results? This seems very strange to me. All right, what's this? I have no idea. That's not what it is. Anyways, so that looks like a losing battle right there. But three times long crude eel OTN UWT. Let's check that out. Yeah, but usually with that search bar, it, it gets more specific, not less specific. At least that's been my experience. Wow, what is this? It's just sitting down here. Holy crap, another one. What? Another one that's thousands of percent. What is going on? This means either oil is just dead or this is these are some of the best returns. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it could be. This makes no sense to me. Citigroup Global Markets, UWT, what is this supposed to be? Seeks to replicate three times of the S&P GSCI Crude Oil Index, ER, the index tracks a hypothetical position in the nearest to expiration NYMEX Lightspeed Crude Futures Oil contract, which is rolled each month into a future contract expiring the next month. The value of the index fluctuates with the change in price of the relevant NYMEX Sweet Crude Oil's futures contract. Huh. I understood part of that. I promise. So all these ones that track positions are just obliterated. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Ultra Pro 3 times crude oil ETF. Oil U. Another one utterly. What? Yeah, don't look at this one. This one's weird. This one's super. So we found two oil ETFs that are just decimated and not following the market right now for whatever reason, which is super weird to me at least. OSOU. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. Oh, I guess it is right. It's a Forex one. Whatever the hell that... Uh, I don't know what the hell that does. That's not the same thing. WTIU. Which is not following oil right now for some weird ass reason. It's actually lower today. April 2nd, so it's trading today. That's a ton of volume today. Uh, beats the crap out of me. That's a weird one. This is either going to give you the best return of your life or you're losing all of your money. So, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Let's go back to the NASDAQ where things make a little more sense. All right, so we're bouncing back 1.26% a little bit after selling off on that candle, so maybe we're... we're we're pausing. Maybe that's our range for the day. Who knows? Yeah, with those ETNs? Yeah, they do. Well, I thought this first one was a fluke, and then this other one looked exactly the same way, meaning it's not a fluke. So WTIU and UWT have the exact same pattern, and they're both based on the same thing. You're talking about stocks. Oh, okay. Mashing. Mashing. Peloton, yeah, Peloton's not too bad. They should do good, especially with those uh, people in big cities like New York. We have 8 million people per square foot. Yeah. yeah the airlines, Oxy's up 22% now. Started up the day up, what, 10? Something like that. So we saw a big spike here the other day after uh, kind of an end to a small parabolic run, retracement of most of the move, which is pretty typical. And usually what I would do in that circumstance is draw a trend line across there, and then there's your breakout point. 
Uh, but it looks like we're stalling at this other trend line, so. We'll see how that goes. Ugh. All right. All right, so we got maybe a keyboard. I actually kind of like this one. It's kind of neat. Minus the whole, you know, three-inch tall keys thing for some of those. All right, let me write this down. Ugh. Ukraine takes up Tesla's ventilator off of via Twitter? What is that about? Yeah, here we go. Let me write this down. I got too many damn lists. Oh, really? No test? Get them some damn tests. So we're going with 104 key. Uh, I think we'll, I'll just go with white backlight. I'm super white, so my, my keyboard should reflect that. <clears throat> that sucks. Make me feel bad about my first world problem selecting keyboards when people can't even have fucking virus tests. Uh, first world problems. How do we get the rest of the world up to having first world problems? That's the questions we should be trying. That's the problem we should be trying to solve, in all honesty. How to get the rest of mankind up to Western world standards. Good LEDs. For what? For the motherboard? You mean for um, like status indicators and such? You know, actually, uh, um, AMD STR4 motherboard. See, I think all these guys have just massive motherboards for this particular chipset. Oh no, there's a small one. I could do that as long as it had. Well, if I do it on the wall, I probably should. It's going to be very empty. <laughs> be very empty. Um, Rob, you're not allowed to speak anymore. I don't want to learn to type with my feet. That's horrible. Open PC build wall. Okay. Oh, dope. I could use plexiglass. Why don't I why am I not creative like this anymore? Holy crap, that's awesome. Dude, you can get so so much cool shit. That's dope. Eight ridiculously wall-mounted PC examples. Yeah, look at yeah, I want something like that. Oh, I can bring my car audio skills back into the game, son. Oh. That's beautiful. That's a lot of money right there. This, you know what? This is the new car audio. Holy crap. Seriously. Wow. I used to do stuff like this. Not, I mean, not computers, but this is car audio 2.0. It's exactly what this is. I did, Robin. I said you're not allowed to talk anymore, so shut up. I'm just kidding. That was a little harsh. I apologize, Rob. A little, little too harsh for...
Um, yeah, no, dude, I completely get what they're doing here. So this looks just like a car audio installation. I mean, if you guys aren't if you guys aren't familiar, um, dude, some of the coolest. This is the shit that I used to do, but like 20 years ago. Complete custom car audio installation. I never put, well, I guess I did put some in the back, but not like that. But yeah, I used to do stuff like this. I actually went, to, I, I took a class for it. I went to uh, Florida with Fishman, and I got pretty good with fiberglass. I can fabricate fiberglass, and I could do, do all kinds of crazy stuff. Dude, this is this is so much fun. You guys got no idea. I love car audio. I want to do something in my minivan, but yeah, big old amps. I mean, just all kinds of cool stuff. But that's I think this is the new car audio. Before you don't need PCs at all, and everything's just streaming locally. Uh, this is probably good for the next twenty years. Yeah, I miss good stuff like this. Look at the stuff they used to do. Alpine cars. Um, that's probably Alpine CES cars. Uh, factory, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I, yeah, I used to do that all the time, Rob. Yeah, so Alpine, they used to build these, they used to literally build freaking cars. They would take a car, completely strip it apart and build a completely new car. It's freaking nuts. Oh, are they still doing stuff? I was actually thinking about this like a couple weeks ago. I'm like, I wonder if they're still building. Yeah, see, they used to build shit like this. I, I, I got to sit in this car. 2004 International CES show. Yeah, I went to this. I got to sit in this car. Back when pictures are small. Oh, that's all we get. Yeah, this whole they built this whole thing from hand. I used to, I I've never gone to this extent, but this dude's making a quarter million dollars for Alpine building, building stuff, built steering wheels. I mean, it was just insane. Great deck. That's a fantastic. Uh, forget actually forget the name of that system. You got yeah. I love car audio. That's like my first love right there, fabrication. So when I saw this shit, I'm like, holy crap! No way. That's car audio all over again. Cool cables, like all the thick cables. It's freaking awesome. I was thinking about something just like that. My wife's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, see, Bumblebee got plexiglass. This is beautiful. I could Etsy this shit. But then I'll spend all my time building this crap. Yeah, see, there's some plexiglass built in. Clear tubing. That's awesome. Plexiglass probably won't come into the mix, though. Not too much. Or, I'm sorry, fiberglass, not plexiglass. <laughs> Real Etsy. Exactly. Yeah, maybe that's what I should I should start to do that. I should start to do professional gaming rooms and do shit like this. That that'd be a lot of fun. It's a full time job though. Yeah, I could so that would be me mating my car audio with my home audio video and theater background with my tech skills. And my car audio skills. Oh, there's the wooden rope PC build. It doesn't look like it's anything that's um, that prevalent, though. The funny thing is, a lot of the, like my my computer is I, the motherboard. The hard drives are now that M.2, so um, 
you don't you won't even have too many hard drives like this. It'll be just an M.2 on the motherboard, a video card and cooling. It would actually it would be a pretty small process. You could do I mean I do have I do have uh, two three terabyte drives and two five terabyte drives that I'm going to put in for video storage. But um, and actually I even have four SSDs, so I guess I, it could end up looking like this. And the power supply actually it could look almost exactly like this. Yeah, there's so much time that goes into that, though. Yeah, I built my uh, built my wife's car. Now you guys are gonna have me go off early on this tangent. Um, the last build I did. See if I can even sign in. Go last pass. That's a super secure password. Oh great, so I can't even view my shit anymore because they want me to pay money. Alright, so so much for photo bucket. Okay, they've locked apparently they've oh there we go. What? Oh here we go. So my car audio eh, some of my car audio stuff right there. Go to the build photos. These are my yeah, I love these photos right there. Uh, this was yeah, this was uh, in the trunk underneath the false floor. Those are crossovers for the components in the front. Got these amps used. They had some damage. I really didn't care that much. Spare tire moved it to the left, and then I built. Uh, so there's the wiring going down right there. <clears throat> yeah, real pimp my ride exactly. There's my uh, power connection blocks, four gauge wire, power going underneath the chassis to the undercarriage ground. Oh, it's prob it probably is just you and Rob right now. I don't care. <laughs> this stuff's a lot of fun if you like enjoy this stuff, which I really do. So there's uh, so there's my spare tire. Um, so there's a subfloor that goes on top of this spare tire. Move to the left. I got uh, blocks right there. Uh, so yeah, the amps are on a hinge. If you can't see right there, the amps are on a hinge, and so this the false floor set on top of that. Come on, there's more than that. Get back to the to the fun stuff. Is this going backwards? How am I going backwards? That's my build pictures. Yeah, so that's me forming the uh, putting the forms together, making sure the heights are correct. 140 amp fuse block at the battery. This was just for me, so I didn't do it super crazy. Just I just electrical taped that. You could do that stuff out of uh, so yeah. Streetwire is really good stuff if you guys ever do any car audio. Streetwire is really good stuff if you can if you feel like spending that kind of money. Come on. Oh, I had a um, sound processor. This is the ECU behind the dashboard. I actually. Moved the ECU and, and built a bracket here and put the, put the uh, audio processor right there. This is a very high quality system. All right, so these are some speaker pods with fiberglass, and this is some Bondo. I'm matching this between the B pillar, or I'm sorry, the A pillar and the dashboard. And so that's a picture from outside of the car. This is the windshield. And so you're looking the outside in right now. And so that's me with uh, things kind of cut down and sanded down. Fiberglass tweeter pods, me doing the fiberglass, some Bondo work. That's the tweeter. I'm trying not to make this take too long. This is going backwards in time. This is my claim old. <laughs> okay, so there's the almost finished product. It's a little loose, but I'm covering it in a carpet, so you'll see it, it comes out really well. That's, that's my plug. This is actually a plug. I made a, a mold of my tweeter. That's like a $400 tweeter that I... Wow, this is going back. I'm not going forward here. So there's the tweeter. Uh, excellent, excellent tweeter. I made a mold of it. This is really going back, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a rem. Okay, this is really going back. That's going the wrong direction. Uh, I did this. I did all that too. Come. The hell. Must be in another folder. 
This is going backwards. O3 F250, what's this one? Oh. Audio video picks. TC audio build. Oh, hell no it ain't. Don't get me started, Rob. That's one of the best tweeters ever built. One of them, I'm not going to say the best. Okay. So a subwoofer ring that I made. There's some cool wiring. There's a fiberglass box for the subwoofer. This thing sounded so good. So there it is being molded into the car. So remember the other the other part you saw. This. So there's a spare tire, and this is me taking up all that airspace, and then uh, building the subwoofer enclosure in the vehicle with fiberglass. Made some wood frames here so I could actually fiberglass, and then these end up getting fiberglass too. So there's kind of the whole thing loosely put together. There's the subwoofer with the ring. I'm gonna go back in time here too. Damn it! I don't know if I ever had the finished product. Well, there's the tweeter ring. There's one of the tweeter rings finished. Uh, came out really nice. Yeah, not perfect. They could have done a couple of things different, but uh, I can't remember if the grills went on. I don't think the grills ended up going on them. Now, where's my where's my subwoofer box? Hmm. I don't have a picture of my subwoofer box. Anyway, it looked uh, a lot like that. Well, these are the woofers and the doors. Those were great. Anyway, I'm really off the deep end here. This stuff's so much fun, man. It really is. If you guys ever like building stuff and love audio, I mean, hit me up. I'll talk with you for hours. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. All right, I'm getting out of here. It's already 8.15. My goodness. I really went on. Okay, how, are we down to one person? I'm pretty sure Rob left at this point. <laughs> Eli's like, screw this. I'm packing up. I'm leaving. Uh... Is that it? Where's my? Oh, there we go. What do we got? We down from four. Oh, we're still at four. We've slowly been dwindling down, people. With my ramblings here. How to kill a live stream by uh, Real Crypto. Absolutely. All right, guys. I'm gonna bounce. Uh, that's awesome, Ellie. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, that's going to be something I'm going to do someday. This is super cool. Yeah, this is super dope. I like it. Live stream my build. You don't want to watch that. My build process, uh, I don't always have the best workflow. See, that's where you have to learn. You, you can do all this, but you can't cut a hole in your wall, dude, to drop your cables down. Come on. Come on. What you do when you're stuck at home. Yeah, right. That's, this is really nice. It's really beautiful. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna outshine all these motherfuckers. Although this one's pretty this one's pretty good. This one's done pretty well. I like the the reveal. I'll do my pipes a little bit better though. These are a little bit too short. Overall though, it's really good. This is yeah, see I don't have great looking RAM. I'd have to like color match everything and I haven't been working towards that, so Pretty nice. It's just like wire management. That's how I'm viewing it right now. Exactly like wire management. That's pretty cool right there. I like with the uh, with the steering wheel. That's a lot of fun. There are cases for RAM. Is that a Hi, James. Say hello to everyone and goodbye, because i got to get off. It's 8.18. Oh, hold on. He's trying to come in here. Can you say hi? Remember Eli? 
He's right there. Say hi. Hi, Eli. There you go. All right, Rob. All right, Eli and the two other lurkers here. Have a good day, guys. I'll see you tomorrow probably. You okay, bud? All right, have a good day. Bye.